Father, we thank you for your word. May your word have free course in our life and be glorified among us in the name of Jesus. Breathe upon your word and let your word transform our life in the name of Jesus. Jesus, speak a word concerning you and I. Praise the living God. In NIV version, he used the word putting it into practice. NIV version. Let me read from NIV version. He said, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? As for everyone who comes to me and hears my ways and put them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house in the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. Praise the living God. From the analysis of the word, putting the word to practice, he said, we show you a man who put God's word into practice. Remember, Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9, that we are God's workers, we are God's field, and we are God's building. Now Jesus talking about a man building a house. In other words, we building our life. And he used another word upon, he laid the foundation on the rock. Now remember, Jesus is the rock. The rock of ages that never fails. And the foundation is the word of God. He said a man building himself as a building, lay the foundation on the rock. The foundation of the word, he laid it upon Christ Jesus. He said, when a flood came, the torrent struck, the trouble, the tribulation, the obstacles, the challenges, problems of life, issue of frustration. But he said, such man was not moved. It was not shaken based on the challenges surrounding him. Why? Because he built, he built himself on the foundation and on the rock. Praise the living God. That is why a songwriter said, I'm standing on the word of God. The word of God is power. I'm standing on the word of God. The word of God is power. We are standing on the word of God. The word of God is power. We are standing on the word of God. The word of God is power. Oh, we are standing on the word of God. The word of God is power. We are standing on the word of God. The word of God is power. And David said in Psalm 119 verse 89, Forever, Lord, your word is settled in heaven. And God confirmed me in Psalm 138 verse 6. He said, I magnify my word above my name. Praise the living God. By the help of the Holy Ghost, we'll be looking on the topic, putting God's word into practice. Putting God's word into practice. Praise Master Jesus. Putting God's word into practice. The same account was also recorded in the book of Matthew 7 verse 24 to 27. Amen. Putting the word of God into practice. Let's look at what 
prophet Ezekiel said when God delivered the words to him. Ezekiel chapter 33 from verse 30 to 32. Ezekiel 33 from verse 30 to 32. I read from NIV version. He said, as for you, son of man, verse 30, your people are talking together about you by the works and at the docks of the houses, saying to each other, come and hear the message that has come from the Lord. In other words, come and hear the word that has come from the Lord. Verse 31, my people come to you as they usually do. And sit before you to hear your words. But they do not put them into practice. This is what shows the difference among believers. The one that puts the word into practice. And the one that hears the word and forget about it without using it. Praise the living God. The people. Come and sit before you to hear your words. But they do not put them into practice. Their mouths speak of love, but their hearts are greedy for unjust gain. Verse 32. Indeed, to them you are nothing more than one who sings love songs with a beautiful voice and plays an instrument where. For they hear your words, but they do not put them into practice. Praise the living God. Jesus said in the book of John 17, uh, 13 verse 17. If ye have known this, then do them. Now you have known the word, then do what the word says you should do. Praise Master Jesus. Now that we have heard the word, we have studied the word, we have read the word, we have preached the word. He said, let us put it into practice. Putting the word into consideration. In James chapter 1 from verse 20 to 25, he said, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all, mo um, all moral fitting and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you he said, do not merely listen. Do not merely listen to the word and to deceive yourselves. Do what the word says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror. And after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Verse 25, he said, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continuing in it, putting it to practice, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, doing the word, putting the word into practice, acting on the word, he said, they shall be blessed in what they do, which means putting God's word into work. Is what enhances God's blessings in our life. Praise the living God. The question is, what does it mean to put God's word into practice? Putting the word into practice is putting the word to work. To put God's word into practice is to put it to work. Not saying it, not preaching it, not hearing it, but acting on it. Putting the word to work is what establishes our words in life. No man who puts God's word into practice becomes wordless before men. It's not possible. Praise the living God. Putting the word of God into practice is doing or acting according to what the word says. Putting God's word into practice is keeping the word. I'm not saying to put the Bible on that pillow. No. The word says do this, you do it. That is the keeping. Not to put it inside wardrobe. Not that kind of keeping. Praise the living God. 
putting the word of God into practice is obeying every instruction of the word. Praise Master Jesus. W-O-R-O-D, the word. Now, remember in John 1, it said, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with him. He said, all things were made by that word. Without that word, there was nothing made that was made. He said, in him, in that word, you will obtain life. And that life is the light of men. And that light shines in darkness. The darkness could not resist it, could not hold it, could not comprehend it. Praise Master Jesus. The word, W. For weapon and wonders. When we hold on to the word. It become a tool. The word serves as a tool for weapon. And wonders. It become a weapon of war. That is why Jeremiah said. For thou art my battle ass. And the what? Weapon of my warfare. So when we lay hold on the word. And put it to practice. As a weapon. We become a wanderer. Praise Master Jesus. Remember Isaiah said, in Isaiah 8, 18, I and the children whom the Lord has given unto me, we are for signs and for wonders. And the word of God is what provoked the wonders of God. Remember in the book of Mark chapter 16, verse 20, when Jesus gave the disciple instruction, and said, preach everywhere, make disciples for me in all nations. Baptizing them in the name of God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And when he ascended all to heaven, he said they went everywhere preaching the word. And God was confirming his word with signs following. Praise the living God. So when we lay hold on the word of God and put into practice as a weapon of war, it also makes us a wonder. Praise Master Jesus. The all in the world is what organizes. He organizes life. Any life that is scattered, shattered, and battered, when the world comes in, it will put those life in order. Organize it very well. Praise the living God. The world also opens up. Remember the case of Lazarus, dead and buried for four days. When the world appeared, which is Jesus, the world came, and the grave was opened. He that was dead and buried for four days came back to life. The world opens up. It opens up destiny. And I pray this moment. And any grave that has swallowed what belongs to us. But the power in the world. That grave is opening now in the name of Jesus. And any finances that are being buried. In any grave. By the power in the world. That finances is coming up. That grave is opened up. In the name of Jesus. And any spiritual life gifts that has been buried by the wicked one, by the power in the world that opens up destiny, that same power is at work. He's opening that grave now, and that spiritual gift is coming alive in the name of Jesus. The world operates the supernatural. When we lay hold on the world, we walk in the realm of the supernatural. Praise Master Jesus. Remember in the book of Exodus chapter 4, how God said to Moses, what is in the hand? He said, rod. Then you take the rod in your hand, with it, you will do signs and wonder. And Moses performed all kind of miracles, signs and wonder in the land of Egypt with the rod in his hand. And if you read Isaiah 11 verse 1, he said, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, talking about Jesus. And Jesus is the word. In New Testament. Praise Master Jesus. So when we lay hold on the word and put into practice, it makes us to walk in the realm of supernatural, operating the realm of the supernatural. Praise Master Jesus. The arrow in the word releases, stand for release. When we lay hold on the word, it releases us from any captivity, from any bondage. Praise Master Jesus. The word restructure life. The world reproved. When we look at the world, then we begin to see our mistakes. That is why Second uh, Timothy three verse sixteen, the, what, the uh, all scripture were given by the inspiration of the of the of the Lord, 
It's for reproof. It's for correction. So when we hold the word, it reproves us. Ah, this thing you did. After acting, you look at the word, you discover that what we do or what you have done is against what God has said. Praise Master Jesus. So by that word, it reproves us not to fall such victim again. The word reshape destiny. The word rearrange life. The word rebuild. The word remote. The word refine. It's like a refining fire. According to the book of Malachi chapter 3. It's like a refining fire. That refines his people. The word recreates. If there is anything that is missing in the body system. In terms of health. If it cannot be replaceable. It can be recreated. Praise Master Jesus. The word is what regenerates the mind. Of the believer. That is why Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 12. Be not conformed to uh, verse 2 to this word. But be transformed by the renewing, regenerated heart of your mind. By the word of the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. The word also reposition. Is what reposition us for blessings. Amen. The word of God serves as a tool to repair. If there is anything that has been destroyed in the body system, in life or whatever, by the word, it can be repaired. Praise Master Jesus. The word is what brings back to life whatever that has been destroyed. Job said in Job 14 verse 7, he said, even though the roots have been dried up. He said, but by a little scent of water, it shall sprout, sprout up again. When the tree is being cut down, he said, there is a hope for it. By a little scent of water. Now, if you read Ephesians 5 verse 30, he said, uh, verse 26, uh, refresh it then, wash it then, with a, uh, with a, um, wash it all our sins with the waters of the world. So the word of God represents the water. When the word comes, it enters, it penetrates in, it rearrange, it repair, it reposition, it recreates, it refine, it restructure, it remold, it rebuild, it reshape, and it reproved. Praise Master Jesus. I pray God will help understand in the name of Jesus. The D of the world serves as a tool for deliverance. When we hold the word, it speaks for us as a tool for deliverance. Remember, Jesus cast out devils. Jesus cast out on Christ's spirit by the word. Praise Master Jesus. Praise the living God. The word is what give, enhances our divine direction. It's a tool for divine direction. The word is a tool for dominion. When we are praising the word, putting the word to practice, we dominate every circumstances. That is why Jesus was on top of situation. Any time, any day, anywhere. The world also serves as a tool of destruction. If there is anything that is not of God, that is threatening anyone's life, when you lay hold on the world, it destroys those things. It destroys yoke. It destroys barrier. It destroys affliction. Praise the living world. Praise Master Jesus. The word of God is so powerful. Remember, the book of Hebrews said, Thy word is quick. Thy word is powerful. Thy mm-hmm. word is sharper than any two-edged sword. The word is alive. The word is active. The word penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit, of joint and marrow. The word is a designer of the thoughts. And the intent of the hearts. Praise Master Jesus. There is nothing the world cannot do. Psalm 107 verse 20. When they were in distress. In trouble. They cried unto the Lord. He said God sent forth his word. The word heals. And the word delivered. So when we put God's word into practice. It serves as a tool of deliverance of healing. And there is nothing that can stand against the word of God. If there is nothing that can stand against God not to manifest what he desires to manifest, so also there is nothing that can stand against his word not to manifest what he has released the word to manifest. 
or what he has sent the world to do. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Remember, God said in Isaiah 55 from verse 10, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it boot and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. In verse 11 says, So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but we accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Praise Master Jesus. The word of God cannot go back to God void. We can't accomplish the purpose why God has set the word. It is for us to identify and put the word into practice. To make it work wonders for us. Praise Master Jesus. Quickly, let's look at a few things, a few reasons why we need to put God's word into practice. Reasons why we need to put God's word into practice. Number one reason, because it is commanded, it is a command. Joshua 1 verse 8, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night to observe and to do. Putting it into practice is a commandment. He said, by so doing, you will make your way prosperous and you will have good sources. God has delivered to our hands already the power to prosper. Third John 2, beloved, I wish you above all things that I may prosper, even as that soul prospereth. Pray, Lord, prosper me, prosper me. God is saying, I've already delivered it to you. It's just for you to discover it and make yourself prosper. Praise Master Jesus. Praise the living God. Number two reason why we need to put God's word into practice. Because putting God's word into practice is what shows our discipleship in Christ Jesus. The fact that we are in church, the fact that we go to church, the fact that we, we accept Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior does not entitle us as discipleship of Christ Jesus. It is putting the word into practice that makes us or give us room for discipleship of Christ. According to John 8, verse 31 and 32, he said, the Pharisees that which have received the word of God, Jesus said to them, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciple. If ye continue in my word, you continue to put it into practice, then are you my disciple, and you will know the truth. That truth you know will make you free. Praise Master Jesus. Number two reason why we need to continue to put God's word into practice. It's, it is a proof of our genuine love for God. Putting God's word into practice is what showed the proof of our genuine love for God. In the book of John 14, verse 15, Jesus said, If ye love me, keep my commandments. If we claim that we love him, he said, then keep my commandments. Put my word into practice. That shows that you truly love me. In verse 21 of that same John 14, he said, whoever has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my father. And I too will love them and show myself to them. Then the man Judas asked Jesus' question. Not the Iscarot, the other Judah. He said, but Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? In 23, Jesus replied to him and said, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching, will obey my commandments. My father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. By putting God's word to practice, it's what invite Christ and God into our life and making it their own inhabitants. Praise the living God. The same way God dwells in praises, so also he dwells in his word. When we put it into practice, he makes our life his, in his own inhabitant, an environmental place to rest. Praise Master Jesus. Verse 24, he says, If uh, anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching, will not obey my commandment, this word you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. 
So our putting God's word into practice is what show our genuine proof of our love for him. Our genuine proof of our love for him. Putting it into practice. Putting it to work. Praise Master Jesus. The book of 1 John chapter 3 verse 16 to 18. John said, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our life for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possession and see a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? In verse 18, it says, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with action and in truth, in doing. Putting the word to work is what show our genuine love for God. Praise Master Jesus. It is not enough to say, I love Jesus, I love God. But putting it to action is what proved that love. And that's in 1 John 5 verse 1 to 3. John said, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God. By loving God and carrying out his commandments. In fact, this is love for God. To keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. His commandments are not grievous. So if we truly love God, then we will keep his commandment. Put his word to practice. Praise the living God. Another reason why we need to continue to put God's word into practice. Is because... Putting God's word into practice is what engraft us into the family of Christ Jesus. When we put God's word into practice, it put us in the family of Christ Jesus. Remember Jesus said something in Matthew um, 12 from verse 46. When his brothers and sisters and mother came to look for him, the disciples said to him, when they were standing outside, Ah, your mother and your father, they are looking for you. Jesus replied and said, he Look around and said, My brother and my sister. Pointing to his disciples, he said, Verse 50, For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven. In other words, he who puts... The we the word of God into practice. That person is my father, is my brother, is my mother, is my sister. Praise the living God. Praise Master Jesus. And in the book of Luke 8, verse 21, Jesus replied, is the same account. Luke recorded it as well. Jesus replied, My mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. My brother. My mother, my sister, are those who hear God's word, who study God's word, who read God's word. And not stopping there, but putting it to practice. I pray God will help us with the grace to put his word to practice in the name of Jesus. God will help us with the grace to continue to put his word into practice in the name of Jesus. Amen. Another reason why we need to put God's word into practice is because putting God's word into practice is what makes us a friend of Christ Jesus. Amen. When we continue in his word, acting on his word, we become friend of Christ Jesus. We become friend of Christ Jesus. In John 15 from verse 7 to 15. That account was stated there. When Jesus said if you remain in me. And my words remain in you. Ask whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. This is to my father's glory. That you bear much fruit. Showing yourself to be my disciples. As the father has loved me. So have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments. You will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my 
uh, father's commandment and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My commandment is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for another friend, for his friend. You are my friend if you do what I command. You are my friend if you put my word into practice. I no longer call you servant because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my father. I have made note to you. Because you have put my word into practice, then you become my friend. Praise the living God. None that you are following me that makes you my friend. Jesus didn't say, because we are a follower, that makes us his friend. He said, because you are putting my word into practice. Putting the word of the Father to practice. That is what makes you my friend. Praise Master Jesus. It is for our own profiting. Putting God's word to work is for our own profiting. Praise the living God. When we put God's word to work, it shows that we are in Christ Jesus. And Christ is in us. It shows that we are in Christ Jesus. And Christ is in us by putting his word to work. In 1 John 3 verse 23 and 24, Jesus, uh, John says something there. He said, and this is his commandment, to believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and to love one another as he has commanded us. The one who keeps God's commandment lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. When we keep the word, putting it to practice, then we know that we are in him and him is in us. Praise Master Jesus. I pray God we help our level of understanding the name of Jesus. Putting God's word to work is what shows that we are born of God and we know God. Putting his word to work Shows that we are born of God and we know God. In 1 John 4, verse 7 to 21, Jesus said, and John said, Dear friends, let us not let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that he we might through him live. That we might through him live again. This is love. Not that we love God. But that he love us. And send his son as an atonement sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us. We also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another. God lives in us. And his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we really truly live in him. And he is in us. He has given us the spirit, his spirit, which is the Holy Ghost. And we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in them and them in God. And whosoever know and rely on the love of God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. He said, this is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because we, he first loved us. So whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister and they have seen the brother and sister we have seen, how can such person say, I love God, who they have not seen? Mm-hmm. And he has given us this commandment. That anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Mm-hmm. So our putting God's word to practice is what show and confirm that we are born of God and we know God. I pray God will help understand in the name of Jesus. If we act on our own, we, might, we are bound to error. As human beings concerned, the human nature is bound to make mistakes, 
bound to error, but through his word, it will serve as a guide to overcome mistakes. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. When we put God's word to practice, it helps us to stay on the path of purity. Putting God's word into practice is what enhances our path as staying in purity. In the book of Psalm 119, David says something from verse 9. He said, How can a young man, a young person, stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your command. I have read your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, Lord. Teach me your decree. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your status as one rejoice in great riches. I meditate on your precept and consider your ways. I delight in your decree. I will not neglect your word. Because it is through your word that serves as a guide for us to remain on the path of purity. I pray God will help us understand in the name of Jesus. Putting God's word to work is what gives our seat in heaven. When we put God's word into work, it gives us seats. We have a place in heaven. He grants us access in heavenly kingdom. Remember Jesus said in the book of uh, Matthew 7 verse 21. Not everyone who said to me, Lord, 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 oh God, oh God, we enter the kingdom of heaven. But only the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven. The one who do the will, who put God's word into practice continuously. It is a title to sit at the right hand of Christ Jesus in heaven. Praise Master Jesus. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. The word of God is what helps us to avoid mistakes and going astray. If we want to avoid going astray, going from away from mistakes, then we need to continually put God's word into practice. In Psalm 119 verse 67, David said, Before I was afflicted, I was I gone astray. Before I was afflicted, before affliction came, I gone astray from your word. But he said, But now I have kept thy princess. I have kept your command. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Putting God's word to work is what shows our righteousness. The slogan most people use that no one is righteous. It might be, it be a fact, but it's not the truth. When we continue to put God's word to work, it makes us the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul said in Romans 2 verse 13, he said something. He said, for it is not those who hear the law who hear the word, who are righteous in God's sight. But it is those who obey the word who will be declared righteous. Those who obey the word will be declared righteous. Those who obey the word will be declared righteous. Those who obey the word, putting the word to practice, will be declared righteous. And John said in First John 3 verse 7, he said something there. He said, Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. In human mind, there is no way righteousness can come forth. But acting on God's word is what made the mind of the human to think righteousness. Praise Master Jesus. I pray God will help our understanding the name of Jesus. And we end it here lastly. Putting God's word to work is what enhances our shining on earth. If we want to keep shining, then we should keep putting God's word to work. Remember, it's a 119 verse 105. He said, that word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What does lamp do? Lamp gives light. What does light do? Light shines. And if verse 130, he said, the entrance of thy word give it lights. The entrance of your word, it gives lights. The entrance of your word, it gives light. Praise the living God. And in Matthew 5 verse 14, it says, We are the light of the world. A city that is set upon the hill that cannot be hid. He said, No man light a candle or put it on the bed. But he put it on the candlestick, on the lampstick. That he may give light to them that is in the room. He went further in verse 16 and said, 
So let your light so shine upon all men. Let our light so shine before others. That they may see our good deed and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Praise the living God. Let our light so shine. So when we continue to put God's word into practice, we see that we become shiny and shiny all the time. But when we refuse to put into practice, it becomes dim and dim. Dim and dim and dim. Remember, Proverbs 4 verse 18, the part of the redeemed, the part of the just is as a shiny light. It shines more and more and more and more to the perfect day. Praise the living God. And in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with him. All things were made by him. Without him, there was nothing made that was made. In him is life, and the life is the light of men. And that light shines in darkness. So when we put God's word into practice, anytime we shows up, light shows up. In the midst of tyranny, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of the darkest and deepest places of the earth, when we show up, the light shows up. Why? Because we carry the word and put it into practice. We did not carry the word and use it as a pillowcase. Praise the living God. We did not carry the word and put it under the bed. We did not carry the word and lock it in our wardrobe. Praise Master Jesus. When we don't put the word into practice, we lock it in our wardrobe, which means we are locked Christ in the wardrobe. We said, Christ, you don't need to function now. When time comes, I will release you. That will not be our portion. In the name of Jesus. Praise Master Jesus. The reason we need to put God's word into practice, it is a command. It shows our discipleship with Christ Jesus. It shows our genuine proof of love for God. It makes us to be a family of Jesus. And it shows our obedience to God. It shows that we are a friend to Jesus when we put his word into practice. It shows that Christ is in us and we are in him. It shows that we are born of God and we know God. He put us in the path of purity. He grant us access to heavenly kingdom. It was make us not to make mistakes. It help us not to go astray. The word of God, putting it into practice, is what shows that we are righteous. Putting God's word into practice, proof our light will keep shining and shining and shining till Jesus come. Let's lift up our voice to heaven. Father, the grace to act on your word at all times. To put your word to practice. Putting your word first in any situation before taking decision. Lord, release that grace upon us. Grace to put God's word first before any decision. Lord, we need that grace. Lift up your voice and begin to speak to God. Ask God for that grace. The grace, because it's not by power, it is not by mind, but by spirit. That grace, Father, to put your word first before taking any decision. Release that grace upon us. Release that grace upon us, Father. Lift up your voice, speak to God, ask God for fresh grace by his spirit, by the Holy Ghost. The grace to put God's word first before any decision, before taking any action. Lord, we ask for that grace. We ask for that grace, Father. We ask for that grace this moment. Release that grace upon us. We ask for that grace, Father. The grace to act on your word before our own action. The grace to put your word first before any action or decision from us. Father, we ask for that grace. Grace to step into the realm of putting your work to work at all times. Release that grace upon us. The grace to function in your word at all times. Release that grace upon us. Release it upon us. Release it upon us. We ask for that fresh grace, Father. Thank you, glorious God. May your name be exalted forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.